The Cinders of Dezu, written and read by Oliver Tonic. Listen and come with me on this odyssey. It's a new journey to find out old secrets buried in a world of a tyrant king, a missing girl, and a powerful yet oppressed people. Dezu is a place that can turn you into a legend, but it's haunted by a story that turns legends into ashes. If you enjoy this story or any of my work here on this channel, give me a like and subscribe so you can get updated with each new installment. Also, if you feel so inclined to pay for this as you would a regular book, you can support my work on Patreon under Tonic Torrents. Your donations allow me to spend more time doing what I love, telling stories. So, without further ado, welcome to the world of Dezu. Chapter Zero Glass Root Elixir The night was descending quickly. The man tried to scribble something heartfelt on the piece of paper he had laid awkwardly on the wooden box in his lap. He wasn't always good with words. At least, he wasn't good at the kinds of words that said what was on his heart. He was plenty good at the words he needed to sell. It was probably because of how his own father had been. Cold, distant, hardly there. He had promised himself he would never be that way. So as he sat now atop his wagon that he had just ridden out of town, he struggled to put his feelings on the page. He had to. His horses waited patiently as he worked out what exactly he wanted to say. He had spent all day thinking about it and still couldn't come up with more than the few words he had had in his head. And now it was getting too dark to write much more before he went home with his gift. He finally jotted down something quickly and then tucked his pencil in his overcoat. He didn't know if it was good enough, but at least it was something. And sometimes it's all that mattered. He lifted the lid of the box just enough to slip the note inside and close it up. He put it on the seat next to him and clapped his hands together. He cupped them over his face to warm them through his fingerless gloves before he grabbed the reins of his horses. He then stopped. Just ahead on the road was the figure of a man. The figure was tall, with a cloak draped over his shoulders. He wore a breastplate with intricate markings that he couldn't quite make out in the lighting. Flashes of red material were highlighted in his vision as he continued to squint to make him out. His breeches were black with the same highlights of red. He was facing him, standing totally still. The man on the wagon wondered how long he had been there. As he started to make out the shape of his face, the man spoke. Micah. The voice had youth in it. It was soft, but deep, and almost kind. He knew it all too well. My king. The man in the cloak approached. Micah shifted and dropped his reins, not knowing what stance he should take while sitting in a wagon. Please, came the king's voice again. No need to be anxious, I've come to you. As he drew closer, Micah could see his well-trimmed goatee and mustache, a signature known well throughout the kingdom. My lord, I'm completely at a loss, said Micah. I was just leaving town and had no idea you'd be in the area. The king cocked his head in the direction of the village. I just had some business in the local township that needed my attention. The day got away from me. Of course, said Micah, nodding. You're out late yourself, said the king. I hope you have a torch on that cart of yours. It's getting dark. Uh, absolutely. Micah quickly grabbed the box beside him and slipped it into a compartment behind his seat. He began rummaging around. He quickly located a torch and pulled it out. The king smiled and lifted his hand to gesture for Micah to hand it to him as he drew closer. Micah lowered the torch down and the king took it and turned away. With his back to him, Micah could only see the glow of the torch manifest away from his gaze before the king turned back around and handed it back. A light for a ride, the king said. Ha, <laughs> said Micah. By all means, sir, please. He gestured to his seat. In the new light of the torch, a droplet of sweat was glistening as it ran down his cheek. The king swung himself up to the passenger's side as Micah placed his torch in the holster on the side of the wagon near the driver. He flicked the reins and set his horses off. Where to? There's a sanctuary not terribly far ahead. Even I don't like to be alone at this hour of the night he said, scratching his chin. 
Speaking of which, what's your reason for risking it out this late? Micah cleared his throat and gave a nervous chuckle. Oh, you know, inventory. I get caught up checking things at the end of the day. What did you say? The day gets away from you? Mm-hmm. So is the life of a traveling peddler, I would imagine. Micah cleared his throat again. I'm surprised you remember me so well, sir. I wouldn't expect for the savior King Orion to know my name. He smiled and put his hand on his shoulder. How could I forget the famous Micah Tafferty? Charismatic peddler to the masses. Many know your name, I'm just another fan. Micah gave a stilted laugh. Please, your highness, I... No, no, you deserve the praise. You have goods no one else has, with a reach no one else possesses. I'd be a fool not to know who you are. Micah was giving a bashful smile, looking at the road. Well, I... Thank you, sir. I'm flattered. I mean, aren't you the one who makes that glass root elixir? It cures all kinds of things. Gives you a spring in your step? They say it makes an old man feel like a young man half his age. Micah smiled. Sure do. My slogan is, it makes 40 feel like 20 and 20 feel like 10. Take it too much younger and you'll be in the playpen. Orion chuckled as he reached for something in his pocket. He pulled out a bottle marked Tafferty's Glass Root Elixir. Micah's eyes widened as he watched him turn it over in his hands. Yeah, this stuff. I'm pretty sure no one else sells it. The king stared at it a while in silence. Micah kept his eyes on the road. He felt his ears growing hot. You know, it's probably because it's so hard to come by glass root, the king said. I've looked around and the only place within my borders to get it is high up in the Shimitai Mountains. Orion looked directly at his driver, who still had his eyes on the road. And frankly, I'm not sure how anyone would get up there without a serious trek, with no small amount of dangerous and strenuous climbing. Micah's face was like stone. The king looked back at the bottle. And the sheer amount of it that would need to be brought down regularly? It just doesn't seem economically viable. They were both quiet with just the sound of the horses clomping and the rumbling of the carriage between them. The king laughed. <laughs> you must have some impressive distributors, huh? Micah found his muscles had tensed and began to release when the king gave him a hearty smack on the side of his arm. And loyal, too, the king said. Letting you corner the market like that? Turn right here. He pointed to a path not as well traveled. Micah blinked quickly and nodded with a solemn expression. Uh, yes, very loyal distributors. It wasn't long before the sanctuary was in sight. They were approaching it quickly when the king began to speak again. For such a popular fellow, you sure do lead a private life. When I ask around, no one seems to know if you have a business partner or some loved ones who help you out. Do you have a big family that you come from? A father trying to get you to pay off the wider family's debt? A demanding wife and kids? Micah was slowing down now. They came up to the entrance of the building and he shook his head. No, sir. No family to speak of. The king nodded and hopped down from the seat. A single man with single-minded ambition. I can appreciate that. He turned around to pat one of his horses. Lord knows I could have learned from your school of thought. The forest was quiet aside from the chirping of the birds in the trees. Even they were dying down as the dark continued its descent. The king kept stroking the horse while Micah continued watching him in silence. Well, he said, giving the horse one more pat. Enjoy your night, Micah. Happy peddling. He turned with a smile and headed into the stone sanctuary. Micah watched as he entered and closed the door behind him. Back on the main road, Micah was left with his thoughts. As the horse's trot and the padded dirt filled his ears, he considered his options. He could already hear the scurrying of predator and prey in some of the grasses nearby. His torch offered protection from the night, but he knew it wouldn't hold off the more aggressive things in the dark. He was gradually coming upon the familiar glow of a camp. It was off the road a bit into the trees, but it was surrounded by torches so he could see it clearly as he rode by. 
He knew he was far enough away that he could see them, but no one there could spot him in the dark beyond the light of the flames. He found his hands gripping the reins tight. He didn't want to keep going. His heart was sinking. He felt tears roll down his face. He swallowed hard as he clenched his jaw. He kept his pace, trying hard to keep his head facing straight forward. His eyes strained as they tried to catch as much of a glimpse as they could before the camp disappeared. By chance, a young man walked out from the tent and smiled in the direction of his mother, who was a bit obscured by a tarp. But he could still see she was clearly hunched over a bucket of water, working hard as she always was. Soon they were out of his peripheral vision and the glow began to fade. All that was left was the light of his torch again. He kept going. He didn't know how far he would take the wagon. Just farther down the road? He came upon a route to the left, so he took a hard turn. His horses huffed in frustration. Slowly the business in the trees grew more and more tumultuous. Leaves were being ruffled. Scratches were made in the dirt. A whimper was heard. A twig snapped. Micah's eyes darted about trying to make out anything beyond the light of his torch. All he could see was the path ahead and first row of trees on either side. The branches seemed to be closing in on him as though the path was bottlenecking. He could feel his ears getting hot. Sweat droplets were beating on his receding hairline. His breathing was slow. He yanked hard on his reins, attempting to make the horses stop abruptly. They turned sharply into the trees and clipped the side of the wagon. Micah heard a loud snap of breaking wood at the same time as he found himself falling quickly toward the ground. He landed on his side and rolled a bit. He lifted his head just in time to see his horses running off into the darkness, dragging their broken hitch in tow. His eyes needed time to adjust. As they did, he realized his torch was out. It must have fallen and rolled through the dirt somewhere. He didn't feel any pain despite the ugliness of the crash. He could see the outline of his wagon wedged up against the tree he'd hit. He scrambled under the fractured vehicle and tried to slow his breathing. He sat in the dark, peering out into the trees. He hoped he could see something, anything, that would give him the signal to move if he had to. He prayed nothing would be on top of him before he could see its approach. His vision settled in the dark and the hair raised on the back of his neck. He got his wish. In the faintest of glows, he was able to make out two glowing eyes. Judging by their height off the ground and how close together they were, he knew he wasn't dealing with any four-legged beast. The creature stood erect. As Micah looked on, he could see the glow was smoldering like coals at the bottom of a campfire. The eyes hadn't found him yet. It was time to go. As quietly as he could, he slipped swiftly out from under the wagon. He realized he had hovered a bit as he did. The eyes were searching. Micah, on his feet now, lost visual with the glow as he was now eye-level with his broken wagon. He backed up slowly. First step was quiet, just soft dirt beneath his toes. The second step back encountered dead leaves. Not much sound. The third step broke a twig. Why was he doing this? He was caught now anyway. At this point, if he was going to make a break for it, he might as well pull out all the stops. Micah's feet both left the ground, and he levitated. He was inches above the earth beneath him. This would be totally silent. If he was caught on his feet or off of them, he was dead anyway. This way, he would at least have a fighting chance. He hovered backwards slowly. He held his hands behind him, trying to grab for something to get his bearings. Flying in the woods was always easier above the trees, and at night it was particularly troublesome. His fingers touched a tree trunk and he slipped himself past it deeper into the woods. He hovered over the dirt road and into the trees on the other side. He was putting distance between himself and the eyes, but he didn't dare move too much to the right or to the left. He figured he would stay out of the fiery line of sight if he stayed behind the wagon for as long as he could. That is, until it burst into flames. The forest lit up with the light of the blast. The wagon burned in a fury. Micah began gliding faster into the trees and decided now would be a good time to turn around to see where he was going. He darted through the tree trunks, weaving in and around them. He went as fast as he could within reason. He could only react so fast as the forest came at him. He was horizontal now, gliding through branches and avoiding the brush. 
The farther he got from the glow of the burning wagon, the harder it was to keep this up. All at once, he was stopped. A hand gripped tightly around his neck. Micah's body lurched forward at the sudden loss of forward momentum. He gagged and his muscles tensed from the pain. His hand scrambled to release himself. It was no use. The figure held him in front of its shadowy face. The glowing coals of smoldering fire looked deep into his eyes. A light appeared in the dark that lit them both up in full view. It came from the flames sprouting from the palm of the figure's other hand. Before him was the face of the king. His eyes returned to normal but were fixed with rage on Micah, whose face was bright red with strain. Micah managed to find enough space in his throat to choke out a few words. You aren't as subtle as you think. The king sighed. I don't know how hard I was trying. Subtlety isn't a strength of mine. His grip loosened a bit, but he still held him fast. Micah could feel the warmth of the king's hand growing the longer he was held. I know you have a family, the king said, probably with some half-bred children. I left it up to you to decide if you wanted to lead me to them and get this over with, or if you wanted to take the coward's way and drag this out for them even longer. Micah's nostrils flared. His feet began lifting him off the ground. The king tightened his grip again as his own feet began to slide. No, you don't, he said through gritted teeth as his handful of fire reached for a nearby tree branch. He held them steady as Micah held his forearm, trying to get him to let go. No, the running is over. You had the chance to spare your family the added grief. A life on the run isn't easy. Doing it without a father is even harder. But it's done now. You took the selfish route. More work for me. He pulled him to the ground until he was on his knees. The king's face had an unyielding coldness to it. He lifted Micah's head and straightened him up a bit before giving him his final decree. Micah Tafferty, you have been found guilty of willful endangerment of the people of Dezu. For this crime, you have been sentenced to death. Speak your last words and do not waste them on a plea. Micah's eyes were full of tears that began streaming down his face. He wept silently, but the flicker of the king's light showed defiance in his face. Long live a world where the white wolf won. A bright light could be seen over the tops of the trees from a mile away. A light that was gone almost as soon as it appeared. Hey guys, it's Oliver. Thanks so much for listening. Give me a like and subscribe if you want to hear more. Support this book and my continued writing through Patreon. I'll have regular episodes up until all chapters of this story are fully released, so stay tuned.